morning, everybody. Um, I do get to work with Chris Kenneberg. Um, I guess officially I'm his boss, but um, it's more of a partnership. Um, Dearborn Public Schools is a little bit unique in that we, uh, we do service pre-K through 14, through, so through community college. Um, and we use Moodle with all of those kids. Yes, preschoolers can use Moodle and they do a great job with it. Just to give you a, a little context, we're the third largest district in the state of Michigan. We have 1,486 teachers, um, roughly 21,000 students. Um, we have a very large EL population as well. We're a little over 50%. So we have a bunch of English learners and that'll come into play with a couple of the examples that I'm gonna share with you and about 40 schools. Uh, one of the things that we developed was the Fordson theme. Chris did the work on the Fordson theme and this is why. Technology can be shiny. Teachers can get caught up in the shiny things but it doesn't lead to real learning. And that's what we're focused on. We're focused on what students learn and what students need to learn. My background is actually um, principal. I'm a former classroom teacher uh, and principal. And so what we want to do is make sure that the kids and the teachers are focused on real learning in the classroom, real knowledge acquisition. So you'll hear a lot of places talk about entertainment or engagement and our goal is to get kids to empowerment we want to empower teachers and empower students to be part of that learning so the the fortune theme really helps do that um, we recognize that entertainment and engagement is important uh, that's why there's a lot of color in the the theme that's why we get them focused on what they're doing and we have those controls grouped one example that I, I also want to share is as a principal, I had a special ed uh, teacher, a special ed parent come up to me and say, you're killing me. And I said, hi, how am I doing that? And she had two students in our school. We were a 6'8 school of about 1,000 kids. She said, I have 17 logins to check for what my kids are doing. And I said, you're right, that's too much. We, we brought everything back down into Moodle and that's why we are so um, invested in giving kids and teachers both the power that they need and the alternatives that they need. So the, the Fortune theme really helps do that for us and Moodle helps do that for us. It gives us one consistent place for them to go so that they know where they are and where they're going. In order to help with this, because we do have 1,400 teachers, um, I was able to bring in two, count them, two tech coaches, and they do fantastic work. There's a lot of good stuff out there. And again, a lot of teachers get caught up in the surface level of technology. We go from tool to tool to tool to tool, and we never learn how to use it in a very deep level with real kids in the classroom. So one of the things that the tech coaches, coaches do is they work with teachers to be able to provide that depth. Because one of the things that Moodle can do is it can provide real depth, real learning for kids. So instead of just entertaining them, Instead of just engaging them, it can empower the kids and it can empower the teachers to do what they need to do. So the technology coaches meet with the teachers on their prep, they work with them, um, they develop things um, for that teacher individually, but they also go beyond that. They actually develop model courses and they share those model courses with teachers and others. Um, and one of the things that I'm really excited about is the OER movement, both in Michigan and throughout um, the United States, in developing these things and sharing these things. Um, and uh, Martin talked about MoodleNet, and we're pretty excited about seeing that come into play. The technology coaches also work with the um, um, teachers in a ongoing fashion. So what they do is they will embed themselves 
And because co-teaching has taken on kind of uh, a lot of different meetings, we now call it technology partnership, technology integration partnership. So they will work with uh, teachers on a two week or one week or unit basis so that real implementation is happening in the classroom. And they do the on, uh, on the job assistance as well. Here's some examples of things that they've created. Um, at the elementary level, they've created a spelling course. We pulled some teachers together and they created a spelling course. Uh, it is amazing to me that back when I was in elementary and up to today, teachers would spend a lot of time on Monday. They would read the words. Kids would take a pretest, every kid taking the same pretest. And then on Friday, they would take the post test. Why do we have, have teachers for whom time is crucial spend all that time doing a spelling course when a lot of those kids already know it? So we've put the spelling course at the elementary level. We've done third grade and fourth grade so far. We've put that into Moodle and the kids can self-pace. They can take the, exam, the quiz on their own. If they know it on Monday, they are done. They can move on to other things. There's lots that kids need to learn and need to do. Um, so we, we have that. And then if they don't have them, they have a bunch of self-paced examples that they can go through and increase that. They're learning there as well. Come 11th grade, we have a social studies test where kids have not taken the, ex the material since 8th grade. So our 11th grade social studies teachers got together and put together a self-paced course for the uh, students so they can go through self-paced, they can take it as many times as they want to and prepare for that big exam. And then finally, um, Chris has, has worked with a, a lot of teachers to present, to provide um, templates. For example, um, book reviews. Lots of kids do book reviews. Our book review is a database module in iLearn, in Moodle, that allows the kids to create a very colorful book review. They can include video, they can include the book, um, the book synopsis and their review, the genre, genre and everything. And then that's shared amongst other kids so kids can find other things that they might be interested, that their classmates were interested in. Um, we created the Frere model, which is interactive and includes video. Um, one of our teachers did a, um, has, works with newcomers, so she's recorded a lot of the material in Arabic so that the kids can choose whether they listen to it in English or Arabic. It's about the material, not the language. Um, and there's lots of other examples, and we are more than willing to share those with, with others as well. And the clock caught up, so I am close on my time. So um, thank you, and I will be around for questions now or questions later. Some great work going on in Dearborn. Does have anyone have any questions for Troy? Just raise your hands, and someone will come around with a microphone. Anyone with a question for Troy? I've got a question for you, Troy. What do you think, what was the, um, so as I said uh, to Chris earlier, um, I've done a lot of work in schools, used to be a teacher, used to be a director of e-learning. What, what was the thing which perhaps looked the easiest but was hardest to implement, would you say? Um, wow, that's good. Um, I think that just the look and the feel and making it, it looked like it should be easy to make it um, easy to use and that was a lot of work. Fortunately, Chris does that work. I just go, yes, no, I like that, I don't like that, so. Okay, thanks so much. I, I know a lot of the time, anything which looks straightforward and easy to use, there's been a lot of work that's gone into that, so it's a great work with Troy's team. If there's no more questions, oh, there's one here. Um, we've only got time for one more. Perhaps you could catch Troy afterwards, sorry. Um, but this gentleman here has got a question for Troy, and then we're gonna move on. Um, did you did you have another system that you were using before you started into Moodle? Um, no, we okay. uh, we had lots of other things. A lot of other teachers wanted were using Edmodo. We're using um, a lot of okay. Uh, 
that's so my question is this um because i'm facing this issue right now as we had an old system and they were developing courses a certain way and they created these courses and it turned out that uh, trying to convert them over to Moodle was was very uh, super labor intensive and I was trying to to um, influence them to just learn how to use the um, what's inside of Moodle because what was going on is the old way of doing like questions for ans for instance the old way of doing questions didn't have all the features that, that Moodle had, but the, they were stuck on it. It's like, well, we need our questions in Moodle to function exactly the way they did in this old system. So I guess the question I'm getting to is, did you encounter any of that, and how did you get them weaned off of that, the, the old, instead of you know, using that to use what was in, already inside of Moodle? Um, well, we haven't, we just told them I, I am in a position where I can tell people you have to do it, and we did because uh, one of the one of our keystones is you're always investing in someone. You're either investing in yourself or you're investing in someone else, and um, we've got to get people to invest in the in what we provide so that they can build off of it and do great stuff. So you just basically said, "This is the cutoff. This is what we're using." If it doesn't just absolutely, you know, get uh, integrated into Moodle, then we're not using it. And just put the, the hard. That's where my technology in. coaches came into play because the technology coaches would go and work with them on how it is that it could work and how it could be better. So you have to have some of those models and some of those key people that can help out. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Troy. No problem. Um, so just before we give a round of applause to Troy, just to say that this is one of the really important things around openness in education. It's not just enough to have Moodle as an open source LMS. We need open educational resources. We need to work with educators to understand, help them understand that putting things in a silo is not a good long-term solution. So there is always a cost to switch, but I think that sometimes when we talk to educators and we say, look, this is what we're trying to do here, for the long term. Uh, my experience is that a lot of them get on board, some of them, the hardcore, always won't, but then they're the kind of people who won't get on board with anything that you do anyway. Thank you very much, Troy. <laughs>